Let's continue on from our discussion on the x86 architecture by taking a look at the newer x64 architecture and its associated instruction set. So to start off with, we'll have a quick overview of the x64. We'll look at the principal features of the x64, and we'll discover that there's not really that much difference between the x86 and the x64 architecture. And then we'll take a look at the expanded x64 register set. That is something that is changed quite a bit from uh, 86 to 64. And then we'll lastly look at the different x64 instruction categories. First off though, the original specification for extending the x86 architecture was introduced by AMD in 2000. Now remember the big players in the development of the x86 architecture were first Intel but shortly followed thereafter by uh, AMD. So those two big players in the x86 uh, architecture development over kind of the last 20 to 30 years. So the first generation was called the Opteron and it was released by AMD in 2003. Now Intel followed AMD closely behind and created what they called the Intel 64, the Xeon, in 2004, and that's now called the X64. The difference between the X86 architecture that we saw previously and this X64 architecture are not that drastic. There's not that many big changes. So in general, operating systems and the programming language compilers that are used to create applications that run on those operating systems they manage these differences. So the 64 is a mostly compatible extension of the x86. And it uses, of course, the name 64, it uses 64-bit mode, also known as long mode. And the eight 32-bit registers are extended to 64 bits. So another layer is added on, as we'll see uh, diagrammatically in a second here. And the instruction pointer is also 64 bits. And 64-bit integers are supported in this architecture as the native data type. But to maintain backwards compatibility, 64 processors can also run in 32-bit mode. Now, virtual addresses are also uh, 64 bits wide in the uh, x64 architecture. And this supports an address space of, theoretically, 16 exabytes. So we go mega... Uh, giga, uh, tera, and exa. So equivalent to 2 to the 64 bytes. That's theoretically if we have 64 bits. However, current processors only support 48 bits, which gives us a virtual space theoretically of up to 256 terabytes. Now, most modern motherboards do not yet support this amount, so it's not a limit uh, that is um, one that we're concerned about as of yet. Here's our register set, and you can see the 64-bit extension on top of the 32-bit. So with the x64, register lengths have been extended, and we use the prefix you can see here uh, of R to indicate 64. Remember with the 32-bit, uh, with the x86, we used the uh, extension of E. So the EAX register in the x86 architecture here is extended to the RAX register and the 64-bit architecture here. And here's our full register set, as you can see. So if we take a look at this, uh, the 64-bit extended version of the x86 registers are basically uh, these eight, trying to draw a straight line, these eight registers over here. So these are new, right? So the 64-bit extended version, and they all have names starting with R. So we can see here we have R8, essentially up to uh, R15. Okay. And they can be accessed in smaller widths using the appropriate suffix letter. So we can see here, for example, for uh, a 32-bit uh, portion of the register, we use the suffix D. Okay. So to access the 32-bit portion, we say R8D, R9D. And then for 16 bits, we use the suffix W, so R8W as an example here. Uh, and then for 8 bits, we use 
the suffix b. So r8b. It might be a little bit hard to see here. So but it's r8b, b as in Bob, um, r9b, r10b, etc. for those eight new registers. So these are the eight new registers. So it gives us 16 registers in total for the x64 architecture. Moving on to the x64 instruction categories. So the x64 implements the same instruction set as the x86. There's really very, very few changes. One of them is this new opcode REX, which specifies the use of a 64-bit operand, right, which is, of course, the new layer on top of the previous x86 architecture. So the format of the x64 instructions in memory matches that of the x86 architecture. And the x86 assembly language is very similar to the x86 format with very minor differences. And that's all I wanted to talk about in this session. So we took a look at the x64. Uh, we realized there's an extra layer on top from the x86. We looked at the principal features. The main one being that we have eight new registers and we have a 64-bit space for our, our registers. So registers are 64 bits in length. And we prefix the eight new registers with an R prefix. All right, so thanks for tuning in this session and we'll see you in the next.